Welcome to Exegetical Tools Basic Greek Videos. In this video we're going to be looking at the alphabet and we've already had a video on the um, an introduction to Koine Greek. If you missed that you might want to go back and watch that. It's just a brief intro to Koine Greek and where it came from, a little bit about the language. Uh, but here we're going to learn the alphabet, we're going to learn what the letters are, how to pronounce them, we're going to learn how to write them as well. I'm going to show you how to write them and you can practice them on your own. And then we're also going to, um, it, when we're looking at pronunciation, we're going to look at diphthongs uh, when a couple of vowels come together, how to pronounce those. We'll also look at accents and breathing marks and punctuation. I'll explain what all of those are. They're all a little bit different in Greek. So we'll just start here with the alphabet. Uh, first we have, I'm just going to go through, and you can see the lowercase here. Um, and then you can see the name here. And so I'll go through this. You can just kind of read through it on your own as well. As, as far as the capital letters are concerned, you need to know how to recognize those, but um, th it's not very important to know how to write them so much. Uh, you're going to be seeing the lowercase letters in your Greek New Testament, and that's what's really going to be important. But just learn how to recognize these. For example, the capital of gamma looks a little different, and uh, you know lambda is a little different. So just look at those and learn to recognize them. We're going to start out here with the first letter which is alpha and then you've got beta gamma delta epsilon zeta eta theta iota kappa lambda mu nu xi omicron p rho sigma tau upsilon phi key C Omega okay so that's that's the name of all the letters and now for the pronunciation most of the pronunciation of the Greek letters is pretty straightforward especially the consonants most of them simply correspond to um, what would correspond to our alphabet so for example alpha is simply pronounced ah uh, now this can actually either be uh, a short or a long vowel. There are a few vowels that can be long or short. I'll explain those as we go. But uh, in this case, you're just going to, the pronunciation is basically the same. So um, long or short vowels matters for things like how verbs change their form and stuff like that and contractions with letters and that sort of thing. So um, alpha will be pronounced as and father. Beta is simply a B sound. Ga gamma is a G sound, like G, a hard G like got or get and then delta the d epsilon is e as in bet it's, a, it's kind of a short e sound uh, zeta is just a z and then the eta is a long a something like gate and theta is the th iota is th i like thin and then kappa k lambda l mu is a m sound nu is a n sound See, this is kind of like a KS sound, so if you see this, um, it, it'll be the KS. X, X, it's kind of hard to say. And then the Omicron is, it's, oh, it's, it's not quite a long O, like an O, but it's, it's also not an A, ah because that would sound too much like alpha, so it's somewhere in between, and the word porridge kind of gets at that in between, the O, oh, porridge. Uh, that's that one's difficult when you're reading Greek. It's very difficult to pronounce that the omicron from the omega and the alpha. Typically, as I pronounce Greek, it ends up sounding like one of the two. But if you can, try to find that middle ground. And then P is simply the the P sound. Rho is the r. Sigma is the s sound. Tau t. Upsilon. Uh, the upsilon. Uh, this should actually say. U, uh, this is U um, as in loot, and it's um, somewhere like in Machen's grammar, for example, it says uh, it could be like a German U, the 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 U with the uh, umlaut over it, so U, but uh, a simple like loot is okay, something like that, and then fi would be ph, so the f sound f. And then ki, um, like Bach, and 
There's, you can do that as kind of a guttural if you want, but it's okay if you don't. Just kind of a k. And then psi is just a ps, the ps sound, and omega, the long o sound. Okay, that's how you pronounce them. Now, uh, whenever you, uh, I should note this, this uh, footnote here is that with sigma, whenever you have sigma at the be anywhere but the end of the word, it will look like this, this first sigma. But whenever you have sigma at the end of a word, it will always look like this. So you have to memorize these two different forms of sigma. But thankfully, the second one just actually looks like an S. And the first one is the one you see all the time, so it's not too difficult to memorize those. Now, diphthongs, uh, this is where you have a couple vowels together. And, um, you you know, most of them, if you just said something, like here, if you said I-E, you know, which would be alpha and iota together, it would that's basically what it sounds like. So it's, they're not too difficult to figure out. But here there's a little guide on how to pronounce these. So alpha and iota would be I, like I'll. Uh, epsilon and iota, it's like a long A, like eight, and you can remember that because eight, that looks like the beginning of eight there. Uh, omicron and iota is oi, I said like toy, but you could say like oil or something, but oi. And then alpha and upsilon is ow, epsilon, upsilon is u, like feud. And then omicron, upsilon is the u sound. And I, th I think it's kind of like lewd is a pretty good word to use for that. And then upsilon, iota, we, um, kind of like queen. And sometimes you'll have a rough breathing mark in front of the, the we there, like on huios. But uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. With uh, That leads us to breathing marks, actually. So now, what are accents and breathing marks. In in English, we don't really have um, accents or breathing marks. In other languages, like French and Spanish, which a lot of us are probably familiar with, um, you, if you are familiar with those languages, you will know what accents are. And it just uh, tells you which part of the word to stress uh, in our system. For the Greeks, originally, these had more to do with tone. So something like the acute accent would, would refer to a rising tone and the grave would refer to a um, decreasing tone, whereas the circumflex would be a rise and a fall of the tone. Uh, however, we don't pronounce Greek, uh, as, as we're learning New Testament Greek, we don't pronounce it that way because it would, uh, we're, not, we don't, we're not really tonal speakers. So instead, we use emphasis when we see the accent. So right here, for example, with logos, rather than saying, uh, lagos, we say lagos because the accent is on the first omicron there rather than the second. And now, smooth breathing mark, what is that? It's this little, um, it's this little curved thing here. It looks like this. That's a smooth breathing mark. And then you also have the rough breathing mark. Now, what that signals, the rough, uh, I can actually illustrate this with a specific word. Let's take N, for example. N with a smooth breathing mark is a preposition. And there's the, the smooth breathing mark doesn't give any change to pronunciation. It's simply N. However, if you have the same letters with a rough breathing mark, and there's also an accent, but um, that's the word one, as in the numeral one. Um, and you pronounce this hain rather than ain, so it adds an H sound at the beginning. And if you have, for example, a row that begins a word, it will, um, I believe, always have the rough breathing mark. So it would be like a ro instead of just a ro, it would be a ro. Okay, so that's what the breathing marks are. And as you can already see here with just these two words, um, it's very important to understand the breathing marks. With the accents, like I said, it's either an acute accent, um, like this, or it's a grave accent, like that, or you might have a circumflex, like this. And those aren't too important right now, just know that they're there, and they'll especially come in handy um, to help you recognize the forms of verbs and things like that. Uh, punctuation. Now, I added the actual... Uh, I added logos in there to help illustrate pronunciation because um, the period 
and the colon are just dots, but the period, notice, is down where we would put a period, whereas the colon is a period up at the top of the letter, like this, basically. So um, use that for comparison. If you see the single dot at the top of the letter, that means a colon in English. If you see a semicolon, what that ref that's signaling a question mark in Greek. Um, so right here, the semicolon is a question mark. And then if you see a comma, that's simply a comma. So the comma and the period are the same as we use. And these two are different. You just have to remember those. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too hard. All right, now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to practice. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write these. So I'm going to turn on the ruled lines because that will help you see uh, some parts of the letters need to go below the lines, some of them don't, so this will help you see. So um, I'm going to show you how to write each letter and then you can practice this yourself. Uh, we'll start with alpha, and so that's just like this. You start in the upper right corner and just make like that. The beta starts a little under the line and just curves in like this. The gamma goes a little below the line, like that, it's the up, upside down fish there. The delta is just curve around and curve out. The epsilon is just simple, very simple, like a backwards three almost. The zeta, um, with the zeta you want to start, I'll go down the next line, you want to start up top and make this little curve and then come down like that. Okay, and sorry, I'm trying to draw these as straight as possible, but um, this is the zeta, and that one's kind of hard to get used to. The eta, um, sorry, I'm having problems here with my pen, but the eta will go down like this, and then the bottom goes under the line. So start down, go up like that. The theta is simply a circle with a line through it. The iota is like that, it's just almost like a backwards J without the top on it. Kappa is a simple K. The lambda is two lines like this. Okay, it's not really supposed to go under the line at all, so it's more like that. The mu, uh, you start a little under the line, and then you go like this and have a little tail in the end that does not go below the line. So you can see that over here with, with the mu. The nu is like a curved V. And then the C is just like the zeta, but you have two loops up top. So you loop it once, you loop it twice, and then you come down like that. Okay, um, it's a little bit difficult to get the hang of, but once you practice it, you'll get it a little bit like that. Okay, the Omicron, simply circle, not hard. The P, you're probably used to writing if you're into sciences or mathematics. The rho starts below the line and then curves like this. Let's try it again a little straighter. Uh, the sigma is just kind of start right. You could probably do this any number of ways. Sorry about that. That's not how you want to draw it. You could do this in any number of ways, but I do it like this. Draw a circle and then go out. Draw a circle, go out. And then the... Um, the final sigma, if a sigma is on the end of a word, it kind of goes down like this, goes down like this, and then a little bit under the line. The tau is going to be a simple like that. The upsilon is just a simple U shape. The phi, you just do a circle and a line through it. The he, or the key, uh, it's kind of like a curved X, a little curved line like that, and then a line through it. No big deal. Okay, and last two. The C is just kind of a U shape, and then a line down through it like that. And then lastly, the omega is like a curved W shape. Not hard. Okay, so that is how you write the letters. Um, if you need to review them again, just uh, kind of rewind the video and watch how I draw them. 
You can also find in any kind of uh, any of the grammars like mounts or uh, Machen. Uh, you can go in there and you can look at the alphabet chapter and they'll, um, at least Machen I know, shows you how to hand draw them, shows you where to start the letter, but there's also other videos online you could go um, you could go look at if you wanted, I'm sure, to kind of compare if you need a little more guidance on how to do them exactly, but there you go. Uh, now that you know the alphabet, uh, practice um, pronouncing the letters, figure out how they're pronounced, and then Remember, memorize the name of the letters, and then practice writing these letters. I, I would suggest um, writing them around uh, as many times as you want. I, I assign 50 times, write the entire alphabet 50 times, and that will help you solidify how to write these letters. Uh, for the most part, uh, if you're in school, you might type these more than you would write them, but in this case, you'll probably be writing them more because you'll be doing hand notes and you'll be writing paradigms and that sort of thing. So as you're writing out paradigms and writing out vocab words and stuff like that, you need to know how to write these letters. But lastly, there is an alphabet song that I have posted on our website um, on exegeticaltools.com. If you go to the Greek menu, you go down to Greek alphabet song. I have a link there. It's from Mounts, William Mounts, and uh, it's a link to his site actually. But uh, it's a very helpful song. It's memorable. I've tried a lot of different songs for both Greek and Hebrew, and this is actually the one that I found that stuck with me. It's pretty catchy, and I would suggest learning the alphabet using that song. Memorize it, sing it a bunch. It's very catchy, and once you get it down, it'll be really hard to lose it. Just sing it every once in a while as you're practicing your Greek, and you'll get it. So uh, that's it for this video. That's the alphabet. And remember these diphthongs, remember the accents and the breathing marks, and the punctuation. So that's it. See you next video.